that was Motra, M-O-T-R-A. They're a local band that uh, uh, I didn't actually get the pleasure of seeing, but I heard that they were amazing and uh, just talked to them a little bit. And uh, the guys hooked me up with a media kit and they were all about this. So I'm super excited to... uh, to uh, talk about them just a little bit, uh, I'm stammering because I'm going to bring up their Facebook page. I want to see if they have an. Uh, oh, yeah. So this Friday, they're going to be at Rock and Roll Land at 7 p.m. And um, and then they said they're going to be at the exclusive company at 2 p.m. on Saturday. I don't know if that was last week or not, but it says Wednesday. Oh, that was last Wednesday. So they're not. All wrong. I got it all wrong. Bummer. They, they don't have it. I don't see any upcoming gigs listed now. That is a bummer. So uh, they are on Facebook, Motra, uh, M O T R A, like I said. And I think that's all they have for stuff. I was actually hoping to uh, promote them. That's kind of a bummer. But that song was called ESD, which is Every Surrounding Dimension, I think. And uh, it's a pretty good one. And uh, uh, they hooked me up with a whole CD full of their their tracks. And uh, we're going to throw another one on at the end of the show. So I am here today with uh, Trisha Nell. Hello, Elliot. Hey, Trisha. And uh, I'm I'm intimidated because uh, Trisha, as everybody probably knows, is uh, Green Bay's the Green Bay area, the region, the best attorney around, right? And so she came with a notebook full of, I don't know, I don't even know what it is. It could just be scribbles because I can't really decipher any of it. Well, of course, Elliot, I'm going to look prepared no matter whether I am or not. I do it at every court appearance. I want to outdo the other attorneys, make them feel like I have lots of materials and they don't have any in front of them. So I watch a lot of I, I, I watch a lot of legal shows. Like uh, I'm addicted to damages, and uh, uh, watched a couple of the uh, the Good Wife. I and love the Good Wife, and I just started damages thanks yeah, to your suggestion. Yeah. So, Amazing. So well, whatever they're fine. But the uh, mm-hmm. uh, all I know about the law is what I learned from TV, and so I, I'm supposed to ask questions that I already know the answer to. Okay. And so it intimidates me when I see a notebook full of notes. Mm. So, mm. Um, so now uh, that I was, don't know. That was my idea by Trisha to intimidate. Oh my gosh, she's making fun of the name. No, I'm not. I love it. <laughs> Nick is like, told you. Yeah. <laughs> nope, didn't say anything. Yeah. No. So uh, let's uh, let's just. Uh, I know you have a bunch of stuff you want to talk about. So I kind of like to just uh, give me the the five minute intro version of Trisha. Okay. Intro version. Wow. I didn't mean it like that. That's all right. Um, I knew what you meant. Well, um, do you want to know why I became a lawyer? So I that kind of thing. You know, I I want I I want it to be you know it's your show. Okay. And I want to uh, uh, want it to be tailored to you. Right. But uh, what I ask everybody else is. Why are they here? And they all get confused by that, as you've heard, right? So, I have. Um, so kind of along those lines, though. I'm not going to say because you asked me. That's what but the other... Ob- but you just did. The other people... <laughs> oh, see? Elliot. Oh. Um, the other guests that you've had have said that, and I, that isn't why I'm here. I'm here because I, um, I love your ideas by Elliot. I think you and Nick are a neat combination, and I like the whole podcast. Um, so that's why I'm here. And I'm here to tell my story because that's what you let your guests do. That is right. So um, I'm actually a De Pere girl. Um, I'm originally, when I came to town um, in 1993, um, I started going to St. Norbert College. And um, my father was an attorney in town at Stealth Luke Jansen and Nell at the time which for further along became Stealth Luke Jansen, Nell and Hammer, Judge Hammer. Then more people added, it's now the Stealth Luke firm and my father has now opened his own firm, um, which is the old library in De Pere and has won awards, I believe, for the building. It's beautiful in there. Yeah, it's amazing. I did practice in there, in that building also too. But, so, um, a little background about me. I love De Pere. 
I love Green Bay also, but De Pere is just a quaint, fun little place to live. So I, you're definitely about De Pere. I'm definitely about <laughs> De Pere, Elliot. But now I have a law firm of my own in downtown Green Bay on Main Street in the Main Street Commons building. So I also am about Green Bay. Mm-hmm. And what is kind of neat is I think um, something about myself is that my father was brought up, um, he was he grew up on a farm, so he's a very hard worker. And he's always instilled community in me as well as um, hard work. So when I was um, in De Pere, um, he was always on the board of Celebrate De Pere and on other boards and community. And I always had, at the time, I wasn't big into wanting to volunteer because when you're in college, you want to go out a lot, you want to be with your friends, etc. And he constantly asked me to, you know, would you help with the Kiwani, the Kiwani's Pancake and Porky? And um, will you volunteer at um, the Celebrate De Pere, you know, putting up the basketball hoops? And will you, you know, help with Joe Shankton in the beer tent? Well, of course, that part was fun with Mr. Shankton, uh, the funeral director over there in town, um, who I think now um, owns the vault. Um, and I mean, I'd have to butter corn. But these are things that were really, f- actually, I gave back to the community. It was fun. And De Pere was a fun place to, to spend my college years. So I have to say, um, that's part of the hard work and volunteerism and giving back to the community. And as I now became an attorney in in town, I'm on a lot of boards and that's part of who I am is compassion, giving back to the community, working with, you know, activities. And I'm going to tell you a little bit later, some of the things I've done that I think are when you, I know you've asked other guests, what are some, one of the best moments of your life? Well, I did dancing with the stars and I, something you never thought. Not even let me ask any questions. No, you're, this is my show. It is your show. It's my show, Elliot. Um, so I do want to say, though, today I asked you to wear a Packer shirt. That's true. I got my number 92 Not 92 And I have a Packer jersey as well on, a sequence, of course, quite, quite cute. Um, and the reason is there's going to be a little portion where I'm going to give you a gift and talk to you a little bit more about that. But the other part about... The um, paparazzi's here. I see. You know, they follow me a lot. He's distracted I, I, by the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I have done media, which I'll talk about too, which is an amazing part of But have you ever experience. had like m- microphone and then cameras and hecklers? Yeah, all the time. I, and then like, I'm not sure. Yeah, you have too. Yeah, you, you've yeah. lately, of well. late... <laughs> Um, and you've done quite well for yourself, may I, I might add. I'm I'm loving your new adventures uh, that you've taken on in, in business as well as personal. Thank uh, you. You've amazing. I, I'm serious about that. Um, so anyway, when I was in going to St. Norbert College, uh, I bartended at a bar called First and Ten, and it was a sports bar downtown, uh, right on Main Street, across from. Um, uh, I don't. I can't even remember the other bar. But nonetheless, we had a radio show for the Packers there, and um, Brett Favre, Mark Chimera, and um, Frankie Winters hung out there consistently, and I became friends with them. Mm-hmm. And obviously, um, I spent many nights. I should say having long talks with Sterling Sharp. And these are moments, you know, I don't have anything signed ever because you just don't do that when you're, you know, it's, and, but those moments I'll never forget. And I became quite friendly with them. And, um, you know, Brett Favre is one of, one of, I'm a huge fan of him personally because I got to know him. And his dad was in the bar all the time with him and, and his mom But before he passed. And he would talk about his jambalaya. And um, it was neat. It was neat to see them together. And he was so full of life. And he brought so much to our community. So they, the Packers are a huge part of my life. And when I look, go to other cities and see their their fans, they're just nothing like we are. So no. I know when you had Randy... So we need to talk about that a little bit, though. Yep. So, uh, you know, I just in passing mentioned it to my brother that he should, you know, wear Packer gear. This is true. And he showed up. You know, he's. I'm going to try to have him on next, and then we come in, and Nick has his his uh, Super Bowl. I think it's it has camera corner embroidered on there too. Yeah, when we did our uh, 
what did we call it? The Super Show of Technology Expo. Oh, right. We wore green, not not the specific green that would get us in trouble for having a Super Show of Technology. <laughs> but I'm wearing green. <laughs> well, I it was it's all coming together so for that's, me. So that's our town, right? Like, yeah, that's what we do. So everyone has on Packer gear today. So I think this is coming together for me because what I'm really trying to say is our community, I really like being here. And Randy made a point. Everybody keeps coming back to Green Bay. And that's Randy Scannell, who is one of our aldermen. And, you know, he said people keep trying to or he kept trying to leave, but comes back. And that's kind of how I felt, too. I went to law school in Michigan to get away from Wisconsin. Right. And if people don't know this when you don't i moved to michigan too well and you said everybody comes goes away from michigan yeah i moved to michigan i think uh it was it was for quite a while i think uh quite a while five four four days i think oh did you live in flint no oh okay (laughs) i was gonna say that would explain why you came back (laughs) (laughs) no uh i was in the nicest part of michigan still had to come back oh okay yeah so my, back to my show, yeah, Elliot. Yeah, right. Yeah, back I to mean, you. Ideas by Elliot, but really it's my show. It's really ideas by everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, uh, all good entrepreneurs do is they steal. Artists steal. steal, as Steve Jobs would say, right? True. Yeah. They steal. I'm stealing the moment from right. you. So you steal good ideas. That's all. You yeah. can only steal ideas and hope that nobody sues you. No, you want to be sued. <laughs> no, no, I'm just a magnet for it. That's all. Well, I like it when you're sued, actually. I like it when everybody's sued and they call me. But anyway, we'll get away from that. Are you in my will? Um, like, you're going to get paid no matter what, right? Yeah, I put, sure myself, I put myself yeah, in there. Kind of um, thought so. Yeah. But anyway, I there's a couple of things I do want to mention about myself that I think is, is kind of interesting that I got to do. When I was in Michigan... Um, well, first of all, you have to take the bar exam if you ever want to come back to Wisconsin and practice. Or when you go to any, most states you do. In Wisconsin, if you go to a law school in Wisconsin, you don't have to take the bar exam. So I call everybody that is from Wisconsin that went to law schools in Wisconsin, they're not really attorneys. They didn't have to take a bar exam. Hmm. I had to take two days worth of testing and I multi-stated out, which means I was in the top 5%, I think, or... I better say this correctly, 10% of everybody in the United States I tested out on. And what was so neat about this is that by this point, I had decided to come back to Wisconsin, and I was working at Stealth Lou Jansen, Nell Hammer, and Kirschling and Bartles, and it was mm-hmm. a huge firm. I was working in the litigation department, and I didn't know my bar results yet. And they hired me, regardless, uh, to work for the litigation department. So my father got my fiance at the time in Michigan opened my bar opened the results found out that I multi-stated out which is a huge this is a big 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 deal at the time to everybody because I don't have to take the bar exam in Wisconsin then I only have to take a portion and my score was so high so this is so he calls my father and the whole law firm knows about it they go buy champagne I don't know yet I'm calling I'm like why aren't the results in I don't think I passed and to not pass would look so horrible my dad's an attorney I'm working at his firm I would look like a complete loser so behind my back they're all planning this huge party I'm I'm watching I'm in a conference and I'm watching these attorneys all flying around so the neatest part is my dad got to tell me that I he present to me champagne and tell me that I multi-state out. So that was one of the neat moments in my life because going to law school is a difficult, difficult thing. You spend many years in school to be a lawyer. Right. So yeah, that was a neat thing. That's huge. You know, like uh, my my parents, they don't they don't even know what I do. You know, like they have no Cause idea. Because you don't. What do 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 you? Well, do? I well right now, right now I just uh, you know I, I no. uh, you uh, you talk on the media a lot. Like the media loves you. That's why when you said paparazzi me, I'm like, <laughs> I watch you every day on the media talking about hack. You are amazingly genius. By the way, Apple called you a genius. Oh, geez. Here we go. Okay. I got to tell us. I got to tell a story about Elliot. Okay. Not, the, it, it, this was not, it wasn't an official representative. I haven't heard this story yet. Yeah, I don't see well, it. it's true. Elliot, um, prior to his, well, Elliot has always been my technology person when I set up my new law firm, Trishanel Law Office, in 2012 or whatnot. Um, 
he's had a, other positions since then that and wasn't my tech person, but he set up my complete tech system and all new Macs. And so he's an all new Apples, everything connected Apple and from scratch. Well, I had a problem. He was away actually giving an award to my father. We were away that weekend. Um, uh, giving an, at an award ceremony, okay. getting an award yourself, and no, I, I didn't get any awards. You got the organization got awards. Oh, okay, right, 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 yeah, right. yeah. And I had um, uh, just gotta clear that up. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. It was a team award. He's he won't take credit. He's too humble. But anyway, I had an issue with my computers, and I needed to go to Milwaukee to the Apple store and asked for some help. And they hooked me up with the the Apple geniuses. I had three Apple geniuses working on my system and I had numerous associates around me and they wanted to go through and my whole system and shut it down and look at it. And they looked at it and they looked at it and they go, who set this up? Was it Camera Corner? Because they found out I was from Green Bay and Pier area. And I said, no, um, it's Elliot Christensen from at the time, Green Bay, Green Bay Net. And well, it still goes Green Bay Net. I'm sorry, I didn't mean at the time. And they said, he's amazing. He is, he should, he should work for us. He, this system is set up to the T. You just had a hacking problem. I think she's embellishing a little bit. I am I not. Know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't because I was like, are you kidding me? Then I, I, because I think I paid him too much is what I think. <laughs> you know, I'm always complaining about that. So I have to say that's what they said. They wanted to know if they could hire him and they called him that he should be an Apple genius. Isn't that amazing? Well. Good story. I'd have to take a pay cut. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know, so. I will say, I didn't realize at first when you said Apple referred to him as a genius that you meant like the employment status of genius. Yes. yes. <laughs> I know. Not to diminish that title at all. What what do you mean by that, Nick? <laughs> yeah. That's why I was that's why I was How so do you really like, feel? I was like, Are you guys serious? Like and then I was deciding whether or not I was gonna tell him that because his head is our you know, gonna blow up and blow up and then he's gonna start charging me double and I'm like, Oh, do I tell him or not tell him? But anyway, so that's you know that was the beginning of when I opened my law firm and so anyway I went from law school to working at the DA's office in Brown County for Judge Zakowski now um, was at the time the DA which was a neat experience and so let's talk more about me for a second okay sure uh, if, yeah but you never do that show. it's not your show <laughs> so actually what I thought was exciting about that is uh, there was some I don't even know I never saw the actual thing but like there was some like law magazine or something that like talked to you about your mm. cloud computing initiative for your firm right oh yes that's very true you're right um and we- they and they and she talked to me so that's the That's only true. It's important to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say they they've featured me in many articles, but let's specifically talk about. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, the Wisconsin Lawyer um, Journal had actually sought me out to talk about um, how you know it's very. Uh, how do I want to say this? There's so many laws and very smut, very a lot of security with obviously attorney client privilege. So um, as a lawyer, they are the whole system is really up in the air about doing this, you know, iCloud and blah, blah, blah. And so Elliot has and Gina Christensen have helped me um, go pay go paperless, do iCloud. I'm like, I am the technology guru, like the virtual law office in basically in in Green Bay and almost Wisconsin, I feel like. Um, I can practice anywhere and they've helped me become this great entrepreneur, small law firm. And I'm really doing it very economically, which I do have to say is amazing. And so they did an article on this and they wanted to know how is secure how secure it was etc and Elliot helped me um, you know with the article and um, also I again once again I talked to somebody at a seminar that's from Chicago that's from the bit one of these the biggest firms that does security and he again told me Elliot's suggestions were his favorite software his favorite um, uh, things that he would have suggested to me so I have to tell you, this man has done wonders for my business. 
but then I'm gonna. That's more like it. That's, I'm gonna. Go, that's where I wanted to take things. I'm gonna go there on to are. tell you that I'm gonna take. I'm gonna be taking a, a different direction with my career, but <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with Elliot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so okay, so you were. Uh, I, I did take you off, off okay. subject. I'm sorry. You, so not a problem. Yeah. So you love to peer. Love to peer. You love Apple. You love the Mac. Love the Mac. Yeah. Do you want to know some of the fun things I've done in my life that are amazing? Mm, I don't know. Why? You ask everybody else. That's usually like question four or five. Yeah. I think we're still on number we one. We got to cut to a commercial. Right. It's been it's been great. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Totally a joke. <laughs> I was like, what? Yes. You're going to promote yourself again? Like what else? <laughs> it's supposed to be my show. You know. Like how come this show isn't my show? It is your show. All right. All right. It's, it's sort of your show. All right. you, know, you know, so she's only like halfway through with her first page of five pages of notes. Well, and I want to so. talk a little bit about the the law and the Packers too, because that's uh, there's so much going on right now with the law and the Packers and the NFL, and I think it's yeah. a good time. To, it is interesting. It's interesting. People don't so know. Get, so give a good story, and then maybe we'll flip it back over to Nick for uh, uh, to talk about the studio and, okay. and camera corner. Okay. okay. So, so give me a good story. All right. Like of things I've something I've done. You brought it up. All right, I'm going to tell you two things that I've done in my career that I think is excite that I think it was exciting, and then I'll talk about the law after that. When after Nick, um, one is that um, I was a legal analysis for WBAY for the Stephen Avery and Brendan Desi trial, and. I reported every day on the case from day one before a jury was even picked. And that was just an amazing experience. I had to predict from day one. And, I, and actually, one of the things I always wanted to do in life was to be a jury consultant. So it was interesting to watch um, as the case went through what I you know, what my predictions were and what I said was going to happen and what I thought the prosecution would do, what I thought the defense would do, and then how, what hap what actually happened then the day that, that happened afterwards. So I wasn't given the feed or anything. I had to kind of go, you know, by my gut instincts. So according to The Good Wife, jury consultants make like $20,000 a case. Well, and- I mean, and, that's in Chicago and, and it's fiction. Like I said, I'm <laughs> but trying it sounds to, like a pretty good gig. I'm making a career change is what I was trying to uh, go. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to promote myself right now I'm, if you I'm, I'm if you sorry. would let me, you know. Oh, sorry. But afterwards, um not sorry. WBAY was great enough to give me every single clip that I did from day 1 to the end of it. They gave me a great and to watch it and then to see the outcome, I felt really blessed that I had done a decent job and I think I'm known for the people that know me is I have a feeling always about every case that I've had I know whether or not what the outcome will be I know whether I'll win whether I'll lose or whether I'll come in between I mean I don't really lose cases Elliot of course but if I know that I have a case that's not going to fare out I'll try to settle it or do something different with it but I always have a feeling and I tell I write my prediction down beforehand and I come back and I I'm usually right on I have these feelings and so it's it's interesting so I think that I would make a good jury consultant and I was that was so that was a neat thing I did in my life um, and I want to say one more thing I used to think I was a good judge of people too you've you've made some poor choices lately but um as of late <laughs> but before that you had great choices like myself and it's pretty good and, yeah it's all right all right do you need to go to break no uh do you have you have another clip yeah I have one more yeah go ahead all right or i have lots of them but um nick and, doesn't even like doing those I really to, don't. He wants to pre-record it. We'll and the sad thing is you gave me like several days this time and I still don't no, have the do pre-recorded I mean, do, do you want me to give my take this time? I could do that. If you want. Yeah. I mean, whatever. And you could just break in. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, all all I really wanted to require out of you is that, hey, welcome to Ideas by Elliot yeah. at Camera Corner Studios. So, you know? but, uh, but I was actually, the very first time I walked in here, I was blown away. You know, well, why don't we just do the, the bit right now? Yeah, sure. this um, is this is awesome. Yeah, so right, so yeah. uh, so what, Trisha? Why don't you describe what, like what what we have right around us? It's crazy. Well, I heard the because I watched the other podcasts. I heard the rates and what the setup is amazing here. It is first of all, Nick has been amazing. He set everything up. He's been you know, you can 
come right in, sit down and do your advertising and you feel right at home. It's comfortable. It's a beautiful space. And um, the accommodations here are excellent. I, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great for the lighting. I just I think it's an amazing place. So I can't say anything better about it. Um, so there's a there's an audience boom mic up uh, up on top that we have. We have two like crazy like microphone stand microphones right in front of us. Right, crazy. See, well, it is crazy because uh, it's amazing. I, I feel like uh, I'm taking all the credit. I'm trying to give all the credit to my guests and uh, Camera Corner Studios and Nick just kind of, you know, he, he breaks in every once in a while. But it's it's uh, really it's it's humbling to just walk right in, sit down and uh, just be able to, to talk off the cuff. And yeah, that's true. And just because I have had done some media, it, this is a, this is an excellent setup. It couldn't be it couldn't be better. Um, you're getting your your best buck for this. Uh, I I can't. I mean, I would I would actually Nick. I would take you up on this offer. Okay. I mean, this is yeah. this setup is as nice as any uh, media station and that we have in our in our city. No, we even joked about that. Like uh, off mic, we we kind of joked about how it's, you know some of the TV stations they have they have wires all over the place. Yeah. You get out of the the field of the camera. And, oh yeah, they have smaller rooms and <laughs> smaller rooms and le- and worse lighting and And it works. I'm not, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to tease them about it, but like this is to this me is really this nice. is it's set up really it's well. Beautiful. They, right. they they have uh photography screens, backdrops and yeah. green screens and teleprompters and the whole deal. It's it's uh backlighting, off the backlighting. I mean, yeah. it, they can make you look beautiful like they're I know. Twins. I have a face for radio. And had I known all this was it was available, mm-hmm. I would have you know maybe gone the whole video route originally. Right. You know, but that's what like, Mino says crazy. too when I talk. He to says him. you have a face for radio. No, he just says he does. I, I, <laughs> I was probably right about that. Clearly, I clearly <laughs> I have a movie star. Sorry, Mino. <laughs> uh, this isn't going the way I thought it was, Elliot. Um, ideas well, by that, that, well, that's that's the ad. So mm-hmm. now we can right. we can kind of move on. For, oh, uh, we yeah. we should drop a uh, contact info. So, do you prefer email or phone calls? Uh, I, it's easier to get a hold of me by email. What's, um, what's the email? My my group mailbox to get to anybody on my team is rentals at cccp.com. Or if you want to call, we also have a group phone number nine two zero two seven two zero one four eight. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. And uh thanks for the studio space. I can't really I can't say enough. This is all made possible by by uh Camera Corner Studios. It's pretty awesome. So back to Trisha. Let's uh let's let's hammer these notes out. Okay. Well, I think the next thing that I, I want to talk a little bit about is, and this is getting back to the Packers a little bit, but um, uh, and the change in my career, too. Um, in um, 2012, when I decided to open my own law firm after working for um, big law firm, small law firm, um, um, doing media, um, I had been dating somebody for three and a half years um, by the name of Mark Sonneman. And we, every year, I met him. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. My first date. He's not going to listen to this. No, my first date with Mark was an away game um, to Kansas City for the Packers. And we kept that as our tradition that every year we would go to an away game and to a different city. I have to say every. That was your first date? Yeah. Wow, that's it was cool. a it was a speed date three three days we drove two. Um, I don't think speed dates typically last three days. <laughs> we did. <laughs> that word does not mean what you think it means. <laughs> that yeah, that we didn't stay in the same. Gotcha. We had we went with a group of people, but okay. I sat with Mark. I, I the had game. the same reaction, Nick. <laughs> I had the same. I, we we sat together for the game, and we had excellent seats. But none nonetheless, we decided every year after that to go to an away game. Now, we lost every game that we went to away so far, so we're going to kind of keep it on the down low after this, but I have to say that the September of 2013, Mark planned to, um, this away game. We were going to go we're going to San Francisco because it's their last year and that they're going to play. San Francisco is going to play in Candlestick Park. So, you know, what a monumental game to go to. Um, fine, I was yeah, that was neat. But he had us go a couple days early and go to El Dorado Hills and do a bunch of things in the mountains. And and actually, he proposed to me before 
and uh, there and that was I was shocked and it was wonderful so then we came back and went to the Packer game and so that's a great memory for me too I will say to you though that I thought I was going to be stabbed at Candlestick er, Candlestick uh, stadium because it is in the hood and I, it was a good thing actually that they're moving to Santa Clara uh, I think they're moving their stadium to Santa Clara but um, that was an interesting game and I have to say to you that our other th- third game that we went to was in Indianapolis and here's where this all comes into play um, I went to a game in Indy for my birthday on my birthday Packers lost that one too. They did. Yeah. Well, so, this yeah. one was the, I want to say Andrew Luck. Game. It was yeah. the game where the coach and I, I will not be able to remember his name, but Bagano. he had yeah, Bagano, right? Yes, was found to have cancer. And I'm horrible with names, so that was random. That's great. Yeah. Was found to have cancer, and Andrew Luck, the quarterback, started, and they kept yelling, "Luck, Luck," and I had a Packers hat on, of course, and my Packer gear. And um, we had beautiful seats, and this little boy came up to me, and he was crying and crying. And he said, ma'am, can I see your Packer hat? And his mom was behind me, and she said, can I pay for can I pay to get your Packer hat? I pay any amount. He, he loves the Packers. He's the biggest Packer fan. And I said, ma'am, I took off my hat. I had hat head. I, I said, we here, we in Green Bay would never charge you for a Packer hat. I said, your son can have my Packer hat for nothing. I would love to. Maybe get it you to wouldn't. Him. I mean, I know plenty of places that would charge plenty for. And Packer then, <laughs> and then I went and got a Colt. I went and bought a Colts hat, and Mark was just so distraught. He was yelling. Well, at this me. explains everything. I had no idea. Hold on. Yeah. Cut the microphone. Yep. Yeah, we're done. So and <laughs> it's a wrap. and it was for breast cancer, and it was for cancer. The hats were the money was going towards cancer, and by the end of the game, I have to say to you, of course, we were losing, and they were we weren't going to win that game. It was like the the gods in the sky, come, or heavens in the sky, were coming out because everybody was cheering for them to sure. win for their coach, and. By the end, even the us Packer fans were, sure. it, quite frankly. Yeah. And I have that hat today. And what's so, I guess, I don't know what the word is, uh, a coincidence is that Mark got a job promotion. He works for Schneider. And he is now living in Indy and um, runs their teams, The one of the centers. he got. A, he's doing wonderfully, and he lives in Indianapolis. And... I have that Colts hat, and um, I remind him consistently that he didn't want me to buy the Colts hat. He was upset with me about being that, and now he is but he's still a Green Bay Packer fan, but I am going to be moving to Indianapolis and starting um, a life there with Mark. So the Packers brought us together, too, in a way. So that is another reason why it all comes to play i'm still going to have an office probably in um uh, green bay because i will be licensed and here and do some work and um i'll tell you a little bit about that if i have a minute later yeah okay when i got back from being engaged two weeks later i was hit by an uninsured motorist coming back from court and i suffered um a brain and a closed head injury and it was quite a ordeal actually, which changed my life. And a lot of people I think um, who have gone through that will say it, it is a life-changing experience. I wasn't able to drive for six months. I had just opened a business. Um, I went through, um, thanks to the Bell and Nero team, um, they helped me uh, learn all my executive skills back, but you it affects your right side of your frontal lobe of your brain, which is uh, everything, your emotions. And um, I think that today I've decided um, I'm, I'm sick a lot. I have migraines, things of that nature, and I needed to take a leave of absence from being the criminal attorney that is in court every day rocking and rolling and settle down and but i am a a great advocate for people who have been in accidents because i have gone through exactly what they've gone through and i think i need to focus my attention in that area 
and um, and maybe do some more things with the media. And um, I write a book because I have encountered so many very interesting cases in my career, very high profile cases that a lot of people maybe don't even know about. Um, so that is my new adventure. Nice. Yeah. There. So are we done? Well, no. We oh, we're done with page one. I see how this yeah, is. Yeah, I want to talk about Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> so. Uh, Donald Driver. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to touch on, on the, no. the, the law stuff. Yeah, I do too. Uh, well, I mean. Um, I do too. Because uh, I think that's really exciting. So. In technology, I have a big problem with the way some of the laws are. So, I don't. I don't think I can talk about any of the things according to the the settlement, right? Right. But uh, <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> but I can say that there was a patent place against us. Um, and, Eli- uh, as an Elliotism, I'm just going to say right, right. Stop it right there. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, there there are huge problems with patents, I think, in, in in our country. And I think I don't think most of the lawyers know that. I really don't. I mean, I know that they, I think these things have been talked about more recently. That's true. And more frequently. But prior to that, I don't think that they uh, they really have an idea as to how the patent trolls. Yeah. How damaging that is to our whole mm-hmm. culture of technology, uh, which affects all of us. It's not just, you know, nerds like me and Nick. It's like it's everybody. And uh, when when these patent trolls come along and try to sue people and, and get licenses from every piece in the whole the whole stack, you know, they'll sue Apple, they'll sue AT and T, so they're 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 suing everybody all the way up in every, every realm of the provider. You know, I, I'm and, I'm, and which, I'm sure Camera Corner's been affected by things like that too. Sure, and yeah. which for the big it's companies, insane. it's fine. But then when they start yeah. going after the entrepreneurs and small businesses that can't afford to have the lawyer bills because these lawsuits yeah. are not small little disputes like a collection a small claims case these are in federal court they take up i mean uh, billions of dollars of legal fees and right. time and um in fact oftentimes there's you know numerous numerous defendants and um and now they're starting to put down the laws on these patent trolls as they're calling them and it is serious and in fact i did report on the nfl when they were attempting to um with the merchandise and even they were attempting at one point to um uh, take over the contracts have some control over packer player or not packer player um, NFL player contracts and wow. that would be crazy because how do you deal with salary caps and even right. um, you know well, Jerry Jerry Jones would have had a heart attack because right. his his new stadium he needs to make a lot of money off of the merchandise and the tickets and the you know the popcorn and the beer and so if the NFL would have you know taken over that whole industry and that you know infringement uh, that would have been a big deal which comes to my I'm going to talk about the law a little bit. I want to talk. I got to talk about Roger Goodell and that collective bargaining room. But I need to tell you something. I got you a little gift today. Uh oh. And the reason I did it, Elliot, is because, and I asked you where your packer thing is because, first of all, I don't know that many people know uh, that, Reggie you, White. that you were on the cover of the what is this? Bloomberg Business, Business Week. Week. Yes. And you, uh, yeah, people make fun of that. When you say Bloomberg Business Week, it's a lot of blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It's blah, blah, blah. No, it's Bloomsburg. But, and you are covered in Packer gear, Packer paint, your faces. You're in a centerfold. I mean, this is amazing. This, yeah, yeah. you heard that right, Nick. This, I, Nick saw it. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah, I was smartened up in advance. So, I, I'm showing that to you, and I'm saying I thought that I I felt like you invited me as a guest, and you know, when I was always when Mino had me on, he always wanted food. If you ever listen to Mino's show, you better bring him some food, or you're you know he's gonna be. Well, thanks for the cheeseburgers. That I did better. So <laughs> oh, I went. The cheeseburger was awesome. I was just gonna pass out if I didn't have any food. I went and I decided that I was going to look into buying you something that was very useful and if you look it's an official nfl see down here look at the trademark 
NFL. <laughs> they took over this this merchandise. So oh, that yeah. goes okay. together with the law. Wow. Do you see this? Yeah. Okay, so what it is is a light up mirror pen. And it's a Packer pen. And oh wait till you it's, see this. It's used. No, I took it out and put the batteries in, <laughs> you dummy. Okay, so look at this, Nick. You're gonna you're gonna love it. All right. And I want you to see what I paid for it too. Because you're gonna know that look at this. So look at you when you write. It lights up. And you can look at yourself. And you can look at yourself because you're so vain. <laughs> I'm so vain. I bet you thought this show was about me. I'm so vain. So look at and then you can I, all Okay, day. I'm not the attorney here, but uh, I don't think I should have to pay for you to, to sing right. that. Guess what? It's 240 Eight, bucks a year. A year <laughs> for a show that gets no listeners, by the way. $18. Wow. For this pen. And it's the official NFL logo. Visit NFL.com. Isn't that interesting? Oh. And it also takes these expensive it batteries. It, you can't see it in here. Watch. Well, I don't know what? why. Who writes in the dark? I, just watch. <laughs> it's not doing it right now. Oh, my gosh. Don't act like $18 it's $18 pen. Look at well, look at yourself. That here, here, here. <laughs> it's not an eighteen dollar pen. It's an it's a mirror. mirror. <laughs> it's an eighteen dollar mirror. It's a mirror, but it does light All up. All right, here, hold it up. The battery is is doing something. I needed Gina. Your son, she's in the picture too. Your son has the thing that I couldn't get the right, but I got you all these batteries. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have a ten year supply of pen batteries. Nice. It's not lighting up, Gina. Uh, thank you. So you can wear it around your neck all day, and then when you got to write, you can be like, "Whoa!" And then you can light it up. You can check out your. No, that's amazing. Okay. I, you know, I, yeah, I tease, but that's. Uh, but isn't that, that is awesome? Isn't that interesting though that they have yeah. taken over that? So that was part of the law. But you gave? Did you just give me my own magazine back to me though? Um, maybe. <laughs> But let's let's move on from that. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about what's going on today. Actually, today, right now. Yes, Roger, counselor. Roger, did you see? How, did you see how she just do, 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 she just walked right, right around? Now, that. She's a professional. Today, right now, the attorneys, the attorneys for Tom Brady and for the um, NHL and F- NFL. Oh yeah, I and mean, we're not in hockey. I forgot. Yep. My brother plays hockey. Sorry, it's a it's hard to keep that. And he's awesome. And he's, he's awesome. like a pro. He's. He could, he could be. No, that's he gets paid. Yeah, He's I know. A pro. I know. All right, all right, all right. My brother's awesome. Uh, Chris Nell, shout out to you. Your birthday's coming up. Shout out. Shout out to Chris Nell. Okay, so today, Roger, or I mean, the attorneys are arguing in front of a Manhattan Federal Court District Judge, Richard Berman. They're leaving their last arguments on whether or not the decision by Roger Goodell should be held, upheld. Um, whether Tom Brady should be suspended for four games. Now, yesterday, Goodell and Brady were sent to uh, mediate in front of a federal magistrate and see if they could come to a settlement. They sat together for four hours and came out with scorn faces. No settlement was reached. Mm. So... Um, what's going to happen is the judge is going to listen to the arguments today. He decided he didn't want either of, he didn't demand that Brady or Goodell be there today. And he would make his decision prior to the regular season, which is good. So we finally are getting to a point where we have a judge that's going to make a decision before the season actually ends. So we can put the, it can either be in place or not in place. Right. But what I want to make clear here is that a lot of people are have misunderstood about what actually the, this case is about. The lawsuit was filed by the NFL because they want to prove they want to uphold Goodell's decision that he acted within the scope of his authority to protect the integrity of the game. And most people think um, that Tom Brady filed a suit saying, you know, I I, won't, I don't want to be suspended. But the NHL is trying to make a point NFL. here. I mean, NF, the NFL is trying to make a point here because this is a really serious um, fra- infraction. I mean, he w- they went to the Super Bowl based upon this infraction, if it is ha- to be upheld. And that, they want to set the precedent. And they do. So that... 
this yeah. nonsense doesn't ever happen again. You're right. And yeah. and quite frankly, um, you know, Tom Brady was found that he conspired to deflate footballs um, before a playoff game. And they had, you know, Goodell said he had ample evidence to conclude that Brady was involved in the efforts with the equipment personnel and had the credibility of Brady was at issue. And, um, you know, the, the evidence basically was that he had destroyed he asked right after he was interviewed in march he asked his assistant to dispose of his cell phone uh, which contained evidence regarding this incident and the union is all up in air all up in the air saying that brady is the nfl player association yeah Yeah. but they're a union i'm sorry no yeah yeah yeah. you're right you're right well yeah i just wanted to clear like who you're talking about yeah yeah you're right they absolutely my job is to listen yeah, and to clarify. No, just to listen. Um, but they, they're all up in the air saying that, you know, Brady's been unfairly suspended because the NFL just wants to put out, a they have a bias agenda and that, um, you know, this is a smear campaign by Goodell. And um, it really, they're, I have to say, their um, comments really are out of line. They're they're saying that he, he didn't fall within the scope of his authority to do the, the suspension, which is ridiculous. That's he joined, his job. He joined the league. He, he entered into a collective bargaining agreement. Right. They all did. Yeah. Every single player. Yep. And so. And they agreed to follow the rules. Right. And, the, and they probably also agreed that the rules could change arbitrarily. And they can. Um, they can. It's called having a job. Right. You know, I don't care if you get paid more than a million dollars a game. You know, that's right. your job. And if you don't like it, then go play for the Canada Football League. Right. The truth of the matter is that is really it. And um, the other times that last year we saw a lot of domestic violence issues and some child neglect issues or abuse issues. And those, you know, I find it so interesting that they're those were brought to the federal court, too, instead of sticking within the commission, um, uh, you know, quite frankly, our federal court system isn't meant to decide, um, you know, what and what sort of how many games a person should be suspended and whatnot. That is in a, the collective bargaining agreement. That is, they're really not. It's not a breach of an agreement. It's it's deciding. What, they're they're really deciding what Roger Goodell was meant to decide. So either fire Roger Goodell and say he's not capable or credible of doing his job, which he's been there since 2006. And And then overturn his decision. Right. Because they're freely entering into these agreements. For instance, our Packer player that just got suspended for um, four games... Um, I mean, this was a calculated thing. This oh, was yeah. this was yeah, this, this was calculated. It, it 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 directly affected the play of all the players on the field, and uh, in yeah. stark contrast to what happened to to the Saints, right? When uh, you know they they tackled Brett Favre a little more fiercely than they should have. Like I was. Uh, you know, whatever. I like Brett Favre. Uh, I didn't. I, love I, did, Brett I didn't Favre, like that so he was playing. Very for, upset. I didn't like that he was playing for the Vikings, and I will. Be, uh, I will openly admit that I cheered really loud every time they hit him hard. It was pretty awesome. But I, I'm, uh, I, I gotta go. <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick uh, is it number four being um, like coming soon to town? No, he was here. Uh, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer back? now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But uh, you know, he wasn't a Packer then, so I can. That's fine. All right. I mean, at the time that he was a Viking, yeah. I can I can understand. I I get yeah, it. I get and it. you know, so so uh, if we're going to call into question what the commissioner of the league is right. doing uh, every time he says anything, mm-hmm. which you know they tried and they appealed, but they didn't. Uh, you know, they they lost and then they lived with it. Right. And I mean, they basically their their next you know several seasons were hugely impacted by that decision and i disagreed with it like i i feel like uh so so the so the coaches because the and it was a big deal because the coaches were in on it but you're right um but like the the players on the field were really just doing their job right and if they took it too far and there's a rule against hitting someone too hard or in a certain way we have a structure of penalties in place for that. You're exactly and right. And if they exceed that, we can eject them from the game or eject them from the season, you know, right. and, uh, you know, yeah, it was a playoff game, but, you know, there are rules and there are uh, and, referees on the field. And so a lot of people's, like, 
um, livelihood went into that and when they made it to the Super Bowl then. I mean, that's right. that's huge. Right. And then, yeah. And so... And I, even I, though they would have probably won, they probably would have won the Super Bowl. They probably would have won the, the game before that. That's really not the point. I feel like the Saints would have beat the Vikings no matter what, too. But, well, that's your opinion. Uh, well, I, I, feel, I feel like that was their year. They were going to win. Well, they were not going to. They were then, not going to be. Then they didn't need to inflate. Def- then they did. Then Tom Brady didn't need to deflate oh, the balls. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 But che- cheaters don't ever look at things that way, right? Well, I wouldn't know. I'm not one, so I have yeah. a hard time. I represent some. Good like job, that. counselor. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> she is a professional. All right. But, what else you got? Well, I just got, we got we got time for for two more stories. Okay. What what do you want? What do you want to you ask me a question? You well, you kind of covered everything. Uh, talk about the Dancing with the Stars thing. Okay. Or Dancing uh, with okay. uh, what is it? They have they had to change the name though. Yeah, it was da- it was Dancing with the Stars when I did it. Now it is Dancing with Our Stars. I know. There you go. So, yeah, that's what I, I thought. Something to, like that. I was in the I was uh, in the in the before that. So I'm gonna stick with I was in Dancing with the Stars. Yep. That's fine. From the local Red Cross Lakeland. You and Double D. Me and Double D. I was two years prior to Double D. Um, okay, yeah. So I feel really good about that. I, I, They asked me the year before and the year before, and I said no. And the reason I finally decided to do it was because I had a friend who had a house fire, and she, they lost everything, and she had two little girls. And the Red Cross stepped, I mean, they do for everybody. They stepped up, and they, they helped them negotiate even the insurance um, pay out for them to get a new home. Wow. It was amazing. So I decided I would do it. And I invited her to be my guest and she sat at my table and, um, and I did it. And I'll tell you what, I am not nervous to speak, to do in front of crowds. I do anything. I, I wasn't nervous until I walked out on that stage. I walked out and I thought, holy, yeah. Yeah. It, we have a, a little E on the, yeah. you can say whatever word you want there. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I, in my hardest, my heart, we, most of what you're doing when you're doing Dancing with the Stars is you're raising money for the Red Cross. So you, I didn't practice, um, you, you do get to practice these dances, but you're, you're mostly doing a lot of fundraising. Right. So you're doing, you know, entertaining and whatnot. And I'm happy to say that I um, was able to, so anyway, I, I was scared shit. I was scared and right. nervous, but I had a good time with it. And my second dance, they said, um, Trisha is going to make her illegal moves now out on the floor or something mm. like I that. I never caught that. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, and that was my fun dance. That was my maraca or something. But um, And then I also did, um, oh, what is the one where you put your arms straight forward? I even forgot it by now. But I'm, it's, on, it's always on the internet. I can't get away from it. It's everywhere. And I look, yeah. yeah. But I raised close the tango. to Did the you, tango. The tango. Here I am, the, the dancing tango. expert. Wow. Listen, listen to that. Look at that. I got that in, <laughs> in one clue, the straight arms. Yeah. That I, must be the tango. Well, well I had a visual aid. Like, do, do, do. So you know, I was the so. first attorney to do it. And I'll tell you what, um, it was so fun. All my friends had my a picture of my face that they put on pencils. I didn't know what they were, that anybody was going to do this. So they, it was like I was for president or something. They all put flyer. And I raised close to $8,000 for by myself for that. And then I was on the board for the Boys and Girls Club and they always have a hole in one. And that one year I was asked to be with um, John. Um, oh gosh. Anyway, John knows. John's a charge of the Boys and Girls Club. He asked me to be his partner and raise ten thousand nice. dollars. And that was also in two thousand thirteen. So I did both of those things that year. That's crazy. And I That's tough a, when you're when you're pulled in to multiple so organizations. Why, so you can't go for, back to the well right, for that's right. So that yeah. year I almost raised twenty thousand dollars for our community. That's amazing. Good and job. I held a benefit being we named it Charlie's Angels and um I did it at the uh, Black and Tan, and I did. Uh, I just had a great time with it, and it was a golf outing. So yeah, those are some fun things I did for the community. So Indianapolis doesn't deserve that. You got to keep doing that stuff here. Ah, uh, thank you, Elliot. Yeah. Ideas by Elliot. I also have uh, Dress the Girls as my program that I have received awards for in the, in town. Talk about that, because I don't. I don't think anybody I who doesn't know about it would know about it. And. 
It started from doing mock trial. I've done, I've taught mock trial for uh, Green Bay East and. So what? What is it? It's a program that I made up and out of my basement for underprivileged girls who um, are in school that want to participate in any sort of um, extracurricular activities that need suits like uh, debate. Um, mock trial. Uh, maybe they want to have an interview. Maybe they want to um, have a college interview, things of that nature. Um, and I have collected suits in all different sizes and then um, gone on to get shoes and nylons and pearl necklaces and blah, blah, blah. And, and I made a, like a little store in my basement and it grew into a bigger project and I called it Dress the Girls. And it was for all high school girls and Um, I then, when it got to be too big, I think it was Schreiber Foods asked me, um, can we get um, a a discount or donation for this? And I I realized I was too big, it was too big for me. So I asked the YWCA, Kathy Hinkfist, which is Judge Hinkfist's wife, um, she's the CEO there, if if she would make a room for dress the girls Um, there's also the closet there and she was happy to do that I don't think it's that anymore after my car accident but it's something similar and I'm real proud of it it it, uh, I was featured in 2013 I won woman or I was a nominee for women of the law um and I also In, in what in or for in my field no, but I mean, is that so? Is that a what is? Oh, for what, what's the award? Oh, for um, I'm sorry, the Wisconsin um, Lawyers Journal features um, like ten candidates uh, that they feel did something outrage or women that they feel did something very nice. great, and so that was, and I was the youngest person that and that was nominated. And that was due to your nonprofit work. Yes, nice. Yes, helping young ladies uh, excel in the law. Um, the secondly, I got a, an award from or a nominee from the Doers and the Dreamers, um, which is a national organization that sponsors girls for scholarships. And I was also featured of twenty people that you want to know that year for and all for dress the girls. So that was a neat thing. Yeah, that's amazing. And I I, I wish more people knew about things like that. There, you. you know, every. Not that they're not worthy, right? Like the Red Cross and oh, all those no. kinds of places are, are great, right? But oh, they are. It, yeah, this is just something. And I think there's more s- pe- people that have We have dozens of and like dozens that. of people that are just pouring their hearts into our community. Mm-hmm. So it's. I think that's awesome. So those Thank are you. some of the things that I, you know I want to talk about. So that's, yeah. I'm glad you brought that and up. And you know what? Because of that, I'm on the board of Globe University. They have paralegal school, and they asked me to do the commencement speech for them. And I talked to my story was be great, and that was about how to nice. get out there and be motivated and make something of yourself. Work hard. Don't just be average. Be great. So they took my because of the dress the girls. So I was able to at my young age do a commencement. I used to nice. jobs as line. No, I oh. did not. Oh, I I totally would. Yeah, I gave a I gave a commencement speech for ITT one year. It was on my birthday. All these things happen on my birthday, and well, because you make every day your birthday. Oh my god! Wow, no, That's no, no! It was literally my birthday. Oh the, right, the the Packer no, game was Nick, literally Nick, on Nick, my seriously? birthday. You can look it up. He says the whole month is his birthday, <laughs> and now today on the way here, he declared that there was going to be two months that were going to be I his did. birthday. Oh really? I did. This is I did. Insane. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, Gina. September well, my, and October. My now. birthday is towards the end of September, so I kind of you know I. I really should get both. Gina, it, it's going to be insane. You might as well And it's just... since September's, the, you know, everything starts back up, school. It's like not even really a real month. So really, yeah. I should get August too. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Just saying. It's your show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but so I want to talk about So we're all thing. we're all we're almost at an hour. I got I got to talk about one more thing. Okay. So you, I mean, you can talk about as many things as you want. No, I just wanted this, to give you cuz I I see the clock and you don't this see is the about clock. about you. Oh. You know, Randy or Adam Funk talked about your cell phone um your cell The selfie addiction. Yeah. And so I just had to come today. And well, Nick and I are going to actually open up a clinic. Right. Yes. It's your cell phone addiction program and your clinic. So I thought I'd get show you that i bought this stick he even guiltily held up his phone a, a few minutes ago yeah huh? i think uh, so i think that's where he was going with that buy, oh you can now buy these cell phone sticks where you can do your own selfies 
And I think you got to have So I have, you know, pretty long arms, and I kind of like them being nice and tight. So look like, at this. We can come together. <laughs> this is amazing. Hold up your pen. It's amazing. <laughs> Hold up your pen. Uh, okay, come come closer, and you can just put your face. Look at this. This has got to this got to be part of your program. Oh. People are going to have these everywhere. I think they already do. I yeah. think we talked about the selfie <laughs> stick, didn't we? <laughs> you, that's she, she only listened to the parts you wanted to listen to because oh, we did I, say that they are everywhere. I, I, you know that I at Six today. Flags they literally have a like as you walk in to I'm get, sh- get your tickets it says well, no saying, selfie sticks. I'm saying it's going <laughs> to. So I can't bring here. that. It's going to belong here. Oh, you're not actually taking a picture. I'm just looking at myself. Right. So I need uh, to get into the addiction program because I have this, and I, you, your wife and I use it a lot. <laughs> so I want to know if I can I've never it. seen him use it. I don't know. We don't tell you what we do about using it. They were on a pillow fight the other day. Just really? Saying, well, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> we're singing Pat Benatar. Is that the last thing? Yeah, that's that's all. Or did you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, that's that's really the best of what I have. Okay, so what I what I was uh, told I need to do a little better job of is uh, allowing my guests to have like one last little plug at the end. So. Uh, where would you like people to stalk you online? What would you like to talk about? Uh, so go ahead, whatever you want to talk about. Are okay, you on Facebook I, or Twitter or anything like that yeah, that you want to talk about? A, or a, well, or? first of all, um, I have a website. It's www.trishanel.com. It's amazing. It's going to be, it's in the works of coming back to be amazing. And Secondly, I my have a Facebook. Um, do, you, do you you know the address? Of course, I know the address. It's okay. on my website. Okay. Um, my okay. tech person. So just direct people to the website. And I have Twitter, and Twitter is at Trisha Nell Law. Okay. Great. And I have Google Plus, and I have I have everything. Just find me. Just. You know what? Well, Google Plus is kind of going away, so I think we should. Is oh, it? Okay, whatever. Then, yes. then I, do, I that, don't. Are you being facetious? Boo. I don't. I like Google Plus. I'm sure you do. Yeah, I actually, I know you do, right? Like, uh, oh, I think I've seen. But some I have stuff LinkedIn too. I'm yeah. a LinkedIn well, person. It's it's a it's a solution in search of a problem. Like, you know, if, what's a social network? It's where your friends are. And right. <laughs> I I thought this last plug was about me. I have LinkedIn too. <laughs> and by the way, I'm a superstar on LinkedIn, and I did it by myself. What, what does that even mean? I I'm in the top three percent. Of what? Of like people who do like look at like I have a lot of things. I have a <laughs> lot of things. Lots of people on there. see you. Well, I have a lot of yeah. Lots of people look at me. Okay. And if you look at it, I have a lot of my activities on there of what I've done in life. I'm not saying it to be like like oh it's all about. Like, it is all about. It's her show. Well, it right, is. it is. That's true. But. Um, you brought a selfie stick. It is all about you. No. Oh, <laughs> you brought you brought your own photography crew. That's why we keep stopping because because there's paparazzi my... coming and they want to they they're taking your pictures Nick, over and over and over and Nick, over and over and over. Nick, help I'm me. here. I'm help here. Me, help me. Okay. And I want to say one, help me. <laughs> I want to say one last thing about me. Why I'm an attorney today. It's because I'm a Libra. And I, the scales of justice, do you want to know what that this means? I was going to talk about you, but I want to say. Well, I'm also a Libra. Right, but it doesn't fit you because listen to this. <laughs> you need to have a love. Isn't of, the whole point of it is that it fits everyone who no, is the sign? No, no, because many Librans become lawyers who fight for the underdog. Oh, I hate the underdog. Others become, <laughs> yes, yeah, see, home decorators, which I think that accountants and artists Thanks to the love of their... I like artists. Love of balance and beauty. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So if your birthday was in early October instead of late September, would you no longer be a Libra? I, I don't do a- yeah. astrology at See, all. See, I think he's he's closer to being a Virgo. Well, I don't know. I'm definitely not a Virgo. You're September 22nd. No, You're 20 se- I'm 26. Oh, yeah, that's right. We talked about that. Oh, yeah. Sh- shoot, shoot. You can say whatever you want. All right. <laughs> I don't. I don't beep, and he's got the explicit thing on the. All right, the, on shit. The show, I don't think so. he. I don't think he at all should be a Libra because this symbolizes truth, justice, beauty, and balance. Do you see any of that in him? Uh, there's, there's a little balance. My, <laughs> my logo is my logo is Trishna Law Office where justice prevails. I mean, is this not me? Well, I, maybe I'm the one that's balanced because you seem very. Uh, 
stuck on a, one way of doing things. No. It says sometimes I'm wishy-washy because I have to seek the truth and fairness and all, and I have to look at both sides. You only look at one side. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> all right. All right. So well, thank you, Trisha right. Nell, for coming today. Actually, you drove, so thanks for bringing me. Elliot, thanks for having me, honestly. I think this show was amazing, and yeah. the podcast, and I think it's going to continue to be. Uh, and Nick, you're a great part of it, and I wish you guys... He's the whole part of it. He's doing you everything. Are. Well, You are, and you're a great... Uh, I mean, you're an asset to um, Ideas by Elliot, but Elliot, I want to tell you, thanks. I wish you the best of luck, and I think that you are an amazing person, and this idea is amazing, and Thank I you. wish you the best. All right. All right. Uh, high, high five. five. All right. So we have a track to close it out. Uh, also from Motra. I think I'm saying that right. I think it's Motra. That's how uh, it looks. Yeah. And uh, so you can just, uh, that they, they, they spelled it weird. If you go facebook.com slash, it's like M0TRA. But if you just search for Motra, M-O-T-R-A on Facebook, you can find them. And this one, I think it's called Hearts and Spades. Yeah. Yeah. Great tracks. Thanks, guys, for the CD. I appreciate it. Out. Oh.